Hello and welcome to the next instalment in our ePortfolio webinar series. My name is Emma Dyer and I am the ePortfolio and Curriculum Rep for the RCPCH Trainees Committee. And my name is Fiona Hignett and I'm the Vice Chair of the Trainees Committee. In this webinar, we're going to talk about the development logs on uh, the ePortfolio. As you may have seen, when you click to create something new, there are various options for the development logs. These are a great way to record your learning without needing anyone else to complete the form like you would for an assessment such as a mini KEX or a CBD. We'll then have a brief look at the different types of development logs and what you might use them for. So the first one on the list, as you can see, is the certified course. This does what it says on the tin, really. This is a good place to put any certified courses that are not your mandatory life support or level three safeguarding, as there's a separate place for those. So this could perhaps be a teach to teacher course or a simulation course. In the form, you then be able to enter notes on the key learning points as well as the teaching style, and you can then tag it to the relevant key capability in the curriculum. Don't forget that you can also link your certificate from the course to your log. Just click on attach files at the bottom of the form to upload it. Following on from this is the clinical question. This is a great place to record those questions that come up in your day to day practice mm. that you want to find the answer to. The actual form encourages you to use the PICO model to frame your question. This stands for patient or population, intervention, comparison and outcome. A good example of this would be in babies with gastroenteritis, how effective is oral rehydration compared to IV fluids in restoring a baby's hydration? You can then record the resource you use to investigate this, which might be a journal article or a don't forget the bubbles blog post and what you've learned from this. And of course, you can tag it to the curriculum. The next one on our list is clinics. Again, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you're observing or doing a clinic yourself, this is a great place to record the type of clinic it was, the interesting things you saw, and what you learned from it. And again, as always, you can then tag it to the curriculum. Going on is education meetings. This is a great place to record things like conferences, regional teaching days, and seminars. Like with lots of the other forms, there is space to record your learning points, and there's also the option to add reflective comments. If you wanted to, you could of course upload a certificate of attendance or perhaps some notes you made to be linked to the log by clicking onto attach files at the bottom. The next development log is the governance log. If you weren't sure where to record that audit or QI project or perhaps a departmental guideline that you helped to write, this is the perfect place. You can record the project, the findings and the effect on your practice here. Perhaps you would want to attach the presentation you did summarising the project or perhaps link it to the poster presentation that you submitted based on your project. So the development management log. This one isn't perhaps immediately obvious in the type of thing you can use this to record. It is to record and log management experience. Think outside the box here, as this could be things that you actually do quite a lot. So you could use this to record when you help to run a discharge planning meeting, perhaps when you took on responsibility for the oh. rotor, your attendance at a local faculty group meeting as a trainee rep, or perhaps when you help to run medical student teaching programme. You could also use this to record any management courses or teaching sessions that you've attended. The next log is the meetings and events development log. This log is very open and is a good place to record things that may not fit into the other categories. For example, perhaps a junior senior trust rep meeting or speaking at a school medical society event. You can record any learning points or details that you want to hear and the boxes are deliberately left open so that you can tailor this to what event you are logging. The presentation development log is used to record and reflect on presentations that you have given. This could be a teaching presentation to medical students, presenting in a journal club, presenting your audit or QI project, or even presenting at a conference. There is a space to reflect with some prompts to help this. Remember that you can attach your PowerPoint presentation or feedback if you want to, and don't forget to tag it to the relevant key capabilities. The reflection development log is another straightforward one. This is a space to reflect on different cases or experiences that you have learned from. There's space here to describe the event or case and then reflect on what you've learned and how this will affect your future practice. Remember to keep any patient information anonymized. Good quality reflections can be invaluable for learning and you should try and do a few of these on each rotation. The research development log provides a space to record any research activity that you have been involved with, whether that is recruiting for a trial or your own research project. 
There is a space to describe this as well as enter the publication reference if this is something that is relevant. The safeguarding development log uh, is something that's very useful within paediatrics. Obviously, we uh, see safeguarding cases quite a lot. And whilst, of course, you could record this as a safeguarding CBD and discuss it with a senior, you may want to just record and reflect on safeguarding cases without doing a formal CBD. This is the place for that. And there are prompts to reflect on your role within the case, what you did well, what you learned and what you might do differently next time. The teaching development log is a good log to record teaching sessions that you give. That might be ad hoc bedside teaching for medical students or more formal sessions, perhaps even an online seminar or some de departmental teaching. Don't forget to tag it to the relevant key capability under the teaching domain of the progress curriculum. The service experiences development log. This is designed for you to make quick bullet point reflections. This log, unlike the others, automatically is set as private but you can change this to public if you want your supervisor to see it. You may want to keep it as private if it's something that you plan to expand on later. This was specifically brought in during the COVID pandemic as a way to quickly jot down learning from some of the more unusual experiences that trainees were encountering as a result of COVID. In the form, if you say yes to the question, would you like some examples of how the domains can be linked to service experience? then some great examples of linking these micrologs to the curriculum will pop up to give you ideas, such as adapting communication whilst wearing PPE, linking to the communication domain, discussing self-isolation and social distancing with families, which could link to key capabilities within the health promotion domain, and managing complex rotors in a fluid situation, which you could link into something to do with leadership and team working. <laughs> 